What was your finest moment of revenge? This is more petty revenge but yeah. A few years back, my 15 year old cousin was staying over at my place which I shared with my boyfriend at the time. Her parents were on vacation in Cuba for a few weeks. While she was with us, we had to make all of her food. She couldn't cook and waited for me or my boyfriend to come home, otherwise she would only eat chips or popcorn. She wouldn't even make a sandwich. One day, she updated her Facebook status which was a winnie complaint about how bored she was, she had free reign to go out, and how weird I was. I guess she forgot I have her on Facebook. It really pissed me off, since I made all of her meals, and tried my best to keep her company. That night, when I was making her a turkey sandwich, I took my revenge. I used the end slices of the bread loaf to build the sandwich in the bitter white part of a romaine lettuce leaf. I also put too much mayo on it. She ate that sandwich. And she had a look of annoyance on her face. But there was nothing she could do. Beach. A shitty repair shop in Mobe. You tore messed up our car which left us stranded in a nearby national park. We called and demanded they tow the vehicle in, and while they said they'd come get us they never did. When we talked with park rangers they were quite familiar with the shop, the biggest in town, and with a terrible reputation. We were on our honeymoon, and had more time on our hands than I imagine most travelers do. We went to the shop, demanded a full refund, and when they refused we sat out front on the curb in our camp chairs for two days with homemade protest signs. I was overwhelmed with the support we got from locals who honked and waved, stopped, and chatted with us, and shared their own stories of horror. The owner called the cops on us, but the joke was on him. We'd already notified the police we'd be protesting, and were well within our rights in doing so. In the end the shop owner refunded all our money, and left visibly distressed, when we told him that even with the refund, we weren't sure we were ready to leave town. Eventually we did, but not before filing complaints with the Better Business Bureau and every review site we could find. They'd already been booted from the Chamber of Commerce. We ended up becoming friends with an awesome local mechanic and having a great story to tell. Justice was served. And without a tinge of guilt. When I used to be a cheerleader, we were organizing a trip to Florida, from the UK, to do some training and to have an awesome holiday. I took charge of organizing the flights and asked everyone if they were okay paying me back if I bought all the flights together. Yeah I know, bad idea. Anyway needless to say one girl changed her mind about going because she was starting a new job and just before we were due to go I got a handwritten note in the post from her mother, we were in our 20s, saying that she never agreed to me booking a flight on her behalf and that she wasn't liable to pay me because she had decided not to go. I was in a bit of a panic because I didn't have her home address and she just ignored all my calls and emails. I wanted to take her to court, but to do that you have to have their address in order to serve the papers. After spending ages trying to ask around if people knew her address and even trying to get her friends to give it to me without success, I stayed up all night figuring out a way to figure out where she lived. It literally took me all night, but I managed to hack into her Hotmail account and then her PayPal account, which lead me to her home address. I could have just taken the money from her account, but I did want to do this as by the book as possible. She turned up in court, accompanied by her mother, and they tried to use Facebook photos to prove that I had used her ticket to take someone else to her place. I came armed with a printout of the airline terms which clearly stated that the tickets were non-transferable. The judgment was swift. Victory was mine. Okay. I have two older brothers. Eldest is a good person. The middle is a monster. He is a meth-addled felon. He has tortured my family for 20 years and I have taken the brunt of the assault as the only person willing to openly challenge him. He stole my mother's wedding rings, my grandmother's car, and my TV, to name a few things. My family has decided to try again. To welcome him back into their lives, so I followed suit. It's Christmas 2013, best holiday celebrations I could never imagine. All is well. Middle brother walks in the door to collect presents two days after celebrations. Strike one. Middle brother drops a bag of drugs when he walks in the door. Strike two. Middle brother criticizes the eldest brother's renovations and tells my grandmother she wasted her money. 
Strike 3, in the car on the way home. Decided his best to go back into town together, so it saves someone a trip. Middle brother asks me for my passport. I say no I can't do that. Middle brother concocts a magical story where I borrowed his ID to get into clubs when I was a teenager. Lies. I did not and would not. He says he needs it to get into a party. He's 300 pounds and 35 and would never be carded under any circumstances. Middle brother differs from his standard method of persuasion and starts yelling and is getting increasingly loud and argumentative. I tell him that it is illegal and that it would be very bad for him if he gets caught. There's a line somewhere between asking and demanding something of someone. He crosses it. My heart races like it used to when I was a boy. When he used to follow my friends and I and beat the sheet out of us with his friends. I remember him pulling me out of a lake where I almost drowned. But it's not him anymore. The brother I knew is gone. And there's a total stranger directly behind me demanding the symbol of my liberty. Strike faking 4. I tell him that, if he mentions my passport again on the ride home, I will crane the steering wheel into a snowbank and beat him to within an inch of his life. I hear give me your passport in the voice of a man I don't know, from a face I don't recognize. Blood and adrenaline surge from my heart faster and more rapidly than I have ever felt. We pull into a parking lot, I open my door, and wait patiently until that faking asshole works up the courage to fight me. He steps out and yells something I don't hear. I tell him that I'll give him one more chance to get back in the car without saying a word about my passport ever again. He says passport with a wily grin and expects me to be the same cowering boy that I used to be. The same kid who loved him and adored him and wanted nothing else but to be just like him. I connect the quickest and hardest fist I've ever thrown against another person directly onto his chin. Blood spurts out of his mouth with the second blow. He hits me twice above and below my right eye. I completely lose my sheet and wail on the left side of his face until it is a broken and bloody ruin. If you're reading this, middle brother, fuck you. Edit, you bet your as I felt no guilt. Not me but my mom. When I was 9, I'm 26 now, my parents went through a really rough divorce. Long story short, my dad had a very public and long term affair with a prominent public figure in our area, we'll call her Debbie. Naturally, my mother was humiliated, but back then she was quite meek, unassuming, and not at all vindictive. She only did one thing to the woman that broke up my family. My mom is a nurse, and about 6 months after the divorce she was attending a medical conference our area. As she walks in the room, she saw that one of the panelists was the woman who slept with her husband. Shocked, but always in control, my mother calmly walked to the very front of the room and sat down silently in front of Debbie. Now, Debbie had been a family friend for over a decade, so my mom was intimately familiar with her upbringing and unfortunate issues. Remembering that she was an English lit major in undergrad, my mom took out a red sharpie and drew a very larger on the notebook that she brought to the conference. She turned it around and faced it directly at Debbie, never saying a word. Debbie was visibly agitated, and when it came time for her to speak, something amazing happened. She started ticking. You see, my mother also knew that Debbie had a condition that went under immense stress, despite significant speech therapy and experience in public speaking, she began to twitch and stutter. She twitched so much it impaired her speech, and she had to rush her portion. When she ended, my mother calmly shut her notebook, smiled at the woman, and walked out of the room. She never spoke a word. That was the last they saw of each other. I was living in a Middle Eastern country a few years back. Nice place, but because 50% of the population in the region is under the age of 20, the roads are simply overrun by teenage and early 20s douchebags. The culture's fatalism makes young guys even more reckless and irresponsible than they are already programmed to be by their hormones. So, after a rare rain shower the highway is flooded up ahead 18 inches deep. Traffic is backed up for at least a mile, and it takes us 15 minutes to get to the flooded patch. Everyone is pissed. Then I see two cars full of teenage douchebags passing people on the shoulder on the right from way behind me. Mathurfa, there's just no excuse for that horse sheet. Eventually they get to where I am, and they pass me, just as we are reaching the 50 yard stretch where the flooding is crossing the road. And wouldn't you know it? 
one of them crosses into the far left lane, and one stays in the right lane to avoid the deep water, in the middle lane. And wouldn't you know it, their windows are old down. I'm in a Toyota Land Cruiser, nice big 4WD. So while they're crawling through a foot of water in their little action boy Hondas, I decide fuck it, and gun it between them through the deep stuff in the middle lane. The way from my front wheels was about 6 feet high, and it had to have put 20 gallons of water through the windows of both cars. Completely faking. Drenched. All of them. With nasty urban storm water run off. Ha ha ha. Of course they chased up after me once they cleared the water, screaming and cursing, but I just pretended to be on my phone and ignored them. Eventually they gave up, and, I hope, figured I had just been as impatient and selfish as them, and had hosed them by accident. Most satisfying revenge of my life. In 4th grade gym I discovered heartbreak, revenge, and victory all in one class period. Moments before class had started my boyfriend dumped me, because I was too weird. There I sat in disbelief and sadness, and he just ran around like nothing had happened. We were put on opposite teams, only making the chasm between us greater. Now, I'm possibly the worst person at sports, Wiffleball being no exception. I stepped up to the orange rubber plate, the bat heavy in my hands. The ex was pitching, and called out to everyone in the outfield. Don't worry about this one, she can't hit anything. I was embarrassed, I was heartbroken. Mostly, I was pissed. I said nothing, watching as he casually cocked back his arm. His eyes gleamed as the ball flew from his grip, careening towards me. I raised my bat, and swung with all of my measly strength. The whiffle bull met my bat with a dull, plastic whack. Next, the whiffle bull met the X's balls, square on. I watched as he crumpled to the floor, a wailing heap. My team cheered for me as I ran around the bases, greeting me with high fives as I cleared home. It was beautiful. Very petty, but a major victory for me. In elementary school, first 7th grade where I live, I was bullied by this girl. I was tiny, red-haired, braces and glasses, with low self-esteem, of course I was a target. She was just fat and entitled. She gave me numerous concussions and loose teeth and some emotional scars which made me apply for a secondary school in another district. My parents were a bit surprised when they got the letter about my being admitted, but that's another story. I went on to be accepted in one of the more prestigious public high schools in my area, again, I have no idea how this works outside Norway. Met her one day at the end of the second year. She had put on so much weight, and was on her way home, four takeaway bags in hand, to her parents place. I lived on my own, and was out jogging, at my skinniest, that day. My revenge was being nice to her. She had failed everything, and could only get into the lowest priority high school. I was in the highest priority. She had gained so much weight, and I was skinny and felt beautiful. She bought kilos of takeaway, and I was out running. And I was so nice and compassionate. All those years of bullying. I just felt sorry for her. I'm a professor. Many years ago, I had a small cluster of students in one course that I strongly suspected were cheating. Scattered evidence suggested that they had knowledge of my test content ahead of time. I don't let my students keep their test copies, and I rewrite my tests every semester, so this was puzzling. I determined that the most likely way they were cheating was during the photocopying process, so I set out to test that possibility first. When the next test in the course was getting close, I left the previous semester's version of the test in the photocopy room as bait. I then rewrote the new version of the test, keeping page 1 the same to avoid raising suspicions on test day, but otherwise completely revising the questions. I made the new copies on another department's copy of the morning of the test. Sure enough, when I graded the test I found that my cheaters all had perfect scores on the page 1 questions, but then bombed all subsequent questions to varying degrees. They all went from a res on the first two tests to DS and FS on the test in question. Those patterns alone probably wouldn't be enough evidence for an airtight academic integrity charge, but one of them gave up the whole group in the plan when I called her in to confront her with the test copies. Turns out they had access to my department's copy room from a former student worker and would routinely pop in and steal exams in the to be copied pile after hours. 
In the end, it caused a big disciplinary fuss in the administration with F grades, multiple suspensions, and one expulsion, which is a true rarity given how gun-shy universities are about kicking out students. The cheaters were hoisted by their own petard, and I got what passes for Professor Lee Street cred among my peers for catching a well-organized group that many others had missed. An old post of mine, I used to go to a public high school, where the majority of students were low to middle class Italian origin kids of immigrants, 90% plus. Tough going to say the least. When I was in high school I used to get bullied by a guy called Ronaldo. We had a few scraps, either verbally or fisticuffs over the years. I was always the type of guy who wouldn't take other people's shit, and while others balked at giving me a hard time, particularly when I went through puberty and became one of the tallest largest guys in school he somehow always managed to give me a hard time. It was a tough time, but in a way, I paid my dues early and learned from a stern father that if people punched you, you punch back and you punch harder and you'll know if they are men or not. As luck would have me, Ronaldo ended up in the same college I went to and he always managed to somehow, some way be a little sheet to me. What made things worse is that we fell for the same girl, Andrea who eventually became my girlfriend of over 4 years. Everyone knew he had feelings for her, and that it killed him. She was with me and not him. He always tried to seduce her with random calls and emails, being the son of a wealthy father who owned his own construction company, that he had nice cars, lots of money, a bunch of sheet, that I didn't have, and over the years, worked hard to earn coming from a low income family, that was having problems making ends meet. He was a constant issue the first year of my relationship, and we had several conflicts. Years later, after college and shortly, after I broke up with Andrea, I received an email from him out of the blue. I never corresponded with him, FASA book didn't exist back then, and he went out and told me in an epic letter, which went far too long, swore at me in excess, and used terrible English, no wonder he never finished college, and dropped out to work with daddy. Basically it was a no one liked me in college, and to fuck off. I haven't seen him in well over 2 years, nor did we have any real friends in common. As a way of keeping my cool, nor did I want him to have the satisfaction to get me mad, I never responded to his emails, he sent several. However, I couldn't let his taunting go without consequences. So I went online and googled his name. After searching around a bit I easily found a complete profile of him regarding his career, where he worked, and what type of work it was. His father passed away recently, and he now owned his father's business, and had a team of employees working for him. I spied a bit more, and hung on to the address of his place of employment for several weeks while I plotted. One day, I proceeded to go into a local set shop and I purchased the largest, fattest, floppiest black dildo that I could find along with some guy, and I went home, wrote a special note for him, and put it along with the big fat black dildo, and guy unboxed it in a standard box that couldn't be traced back to me, and sent it priority mail that required for him specifically to sign. The note read, since you have so much time to search out people that never gave a sheet about you to begin with, I figured you'd have enough time to go fuck yourself with this. One of our mutual acquaintances dropped me an email a few days later. This acquaintance worked for an Aldo during his internship and apparently the package arrived while they were preparing to head out for a team lunch on a Friday, and he was very excited to get the box opened, since Ronaldo thought it was something he ordered online that he was expecting and would make it a good weekend and he opened it in front of a number of co-workers, and instead of whatever he ordered he pulls out a giant black floppy dildo. Priceless. I have done this multiple times, but here is the most recent story. So I was coming back from this road trip with a few friends and holy shit, there was a pretty lights show on the way home. So I immediately buy the cheapest tickets available, which came in a package of 4. It cost $40 for each ticket, but the face value was $55. Anyways, two of them went to my friends, and with no time to lose, the show was starting in 2 hours, I posted an ad on Craigslist asking for $60 for it. Wasn't long before I got a message. The guy sent me a text and agreed to meet me in front of the venue in order to pay for the ticket. When we met, it was kind of my fault because I didn't check, but he shorted me $20. I was furious. 
What kind of cunt rips off somebody who hucks you up with a last minute front row ticket, right? So, I have his phone number. For every holiday I wait. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. I like to think he's having a good time, hanging out with his buddies or family. It is then that I post an ad on Craigslist in highly populated cities, San Francisco, New York, Detroit, etc. Casual encounters M4 meters that says something like, the curious twink looking to suck first cork I put a convincing message in that ends with send your cork pics to 123-456-7890. And I will pick the sexiest one. I wait a day and take it down, for I'm merciful. I like to get revenge by making all of a person's dreams come true without them. Once I dated a girl who told me about all of these life goals she had. Go on a road trip with no predetermined destination. Go night swimming in a lake in the middle of nowhere. ETC point ETC. Whenever I suggested we go do one of those things she had an argument that it was not sensible at the moment but would be when she finished school, secured a job, and so on. She dumped me, and I got my revenge, by doing all those things as dates with other women. To my knowledge she has still done none of them. I met a guy who always wanted to start his own coffee shop, but he started spreading malicious rumors about me, and I lost a lot of friends. One friend I did not lose however had a line of a coffee shop, that he needed someone to get going for him. I was working in student life at a university and, but headed with one of the other program directors who was very demanding with his participants show up at x time and do not leave your seats until I say, and so on. When students complained I tried to talk to him about it and he basically told him I had no idea what I was talking about. I had no seniority and I should leave his students alone. So I just started another program which became successful and made him redundant got promoted ahead of him. Why would you take revenge that makes the world worse for someone else when you can make it better for yourself? Years ago, living in an apartment in Johannesburg, the block consisted mostly of elderly folk and a few young working couples like me and my wife, who generally hit the sack early. The place was like a morgue after 10pm. Until a couple of guys move into the place below us. Party types, who would whoop it up till dawn. If anyone complained, they'd quickly get threatening. The owner of the apartment was one of the guy's dad, so they had no fear of being kicked out. One evening, around midnight, they huked up with some mates and girls to go clubbing. They were outside in the road, talking, yelling, girls screeching. Bedlam. Eventually they depart. I was furious, but being an original 90 pound wimp, felt helpless. Then I remembered the tube of superglue in my desk drawer. I went to their flat, which had a serious security gate protecting the front door. I put the glue nozzle into the gate lock, a heavy duty bolt lock, and squeezed the sucker dry. Couple of hours later, lying in bed, I hear the party harders arrive back. Same deal as when they left, making a hell of a commotion as they spill out their cars and head for the apartment. Then silence. Later I heard they ended up breaking a toilet window and getting in that way. The girlfriends of course were having none of it, so they buggered off, as did the mates. The next day they had to get in a locksmith who used a blowtorch to cut the lock out of its steel casing. This damaged the door behind, so both gate and door had to be replaced, along with the bathroom window. Because these boneheads did not have the money for all this, the dad who owned the apartment had to cough. He was so pissed off that he kicked out the room at. From then on, it was the quietest flat in the building. When I played World of Warcraft, I was a level 68 undead warlock leveling in Shadow Moon Valley doing a quest outside of town when this level 70 gnome mage in full season 2 decided that I would be a pretty easy kill. He watches me for a little bit while I run around killing my quest monsters and decides to finally go in and kill me when I accidentally pull some unintended ads. He started blasting me with some frost bolts as it took me a few seconds to realize that he was actually attacking me. Unfortunately for him, he didn't know that I had been grinding a lot of battlegrounds to the point that everything I did in PvP encounters was reflexive for me. So, when I finally notice him attacking me, I wait until I see him casting and send in my Felhunter to silence him. I preferred Felhunter, 
since there was a lot of questions about Locks using Felgood and Succubus at the time, and he immediately freaks out and starts running around accidentally aggroing everything around him. I throw on dots and start casting some shadow bolts when I see him charging in at me to cast Frost Nova. I react accordingly and wait until he is almost on top of me before I death coil him and throw on a fear. At this point he is at a little less than half health and I can tell he is beginning to regret his decisions. The monsters he aggroed are still wailing in him at this point as well. He throws on the ice barrier spell thing that negates damage, the one fell hunter can dispel, and I once again have my fell hunter dispel him, and I refresh my dots on him. When he is almost dead, I decide to fear lock him, and let the monsters respawning in the area finish the job. After he is dead, and I finish my quest, I go back to town and turn my quest. While I'm interacting with the quest NPC, I see a frost bolt suddenly hit me. I look around to see where it is coming, and while I'm registering what is happening, the level 80 elite NPC next to me charges at the source along with his friends. I turn towards the direction they are running, and see the gnome warlock in town launching his revenge attack against me. Despite the NPCs on him, he still tries to kill me. When he is about to die, I throw a death coil on him to get credit for his death. He dies in the middle of town, and I watch him attempt to res three times, before he gives up, and is forced to cemetery res instead, which gives you an annoying 10 minute debuff. A few weeks later, when I'm level 70 in season 1 mix of gear, I run into him again, when the alliance are aiding or grimmer. We both recognized each other, and I killed him again. I guess it is more about his failure at revenge than it is a personal revenge story of mine. This isn't as clever or conniving as some on here but it still ranks as the number one top spot for my best revenge moment. I was 13 and was reclining on a beach chair. This boy about my age and his younger friend, who I'd known for about a week, were standing behind me and kept messing with the chair and wouldn't stop when I asked them to. Him and his friend were classic little bratty, redneck children, the younger one had a rat tail mullet, relevant for later, and the entire time I'd known them, they were spouting off about how the boys were doing this, but the girls couldn't do that, because they were girls, stuff like that. The last time they messed with my chair I stood up, spun around and looked the bigger one dead in the eye, and told him he'd better stop. He looked right at me with a smirk on his face and asked, what are you going to do about it? As soon as the words left his mouth I punched him dead in the eye and grabbed the younger kid's rat tail mullet and yanked it so hard he fell to the ground. Then I sat back down. Both started crying almost immediately and didn't mess with me again. 8 years later and it's still the best feeling of revenge I've ever had. I posted this somewhere else a long time ago but here it goes. I was in the navy. I was in basic enlisted submarine school with shared barrack rooms. I had two roommates who for a lack of a better term, sucked. They were dirty, they never cleaned, and they just smelled bad all the time. Oh, and also they never woke up on time for anything. Every week during room inspections we failed. Terribly. I ended up getting so annoyed with them, because we started to get into a lot of trouble, that I plotted revenge to show the inspectors that it wasn't me and it was my two soil sack roommates. Every four or so days everyone stood duty. One weeknight I had duty and I waited for the exact time that I was a roving watchstander in the barracks to pull off the trickery. I pissed in a ziplock baggie and placed it in my friend's freezer prior to my watch and there I had it, a sheet of piss ice. I walked up to my room 60 minutes before inspection, knowing my factored roommates wouldn't be up, and slid this sheet of piss ice under the door into the middle of the room. And you may ask, why I didn't just open the door as it was my room? Because I didn't want to take the chance of waking one of them up during my covert operation. The inspectors came around and sure enough, oops, I forgot to wake up for my roommates, like I did everyone else on the floor. Amidst the melee of the inspector banging on the door, them trying to get dressed and them both very confused and shuffling through the piss, all hell broke loose. The inspector had those sheet freaks standing at attention leaning over to smell the huge puddle realizing it was piss in the middle of the floor. The face he made when he made that realization was something I will never forget. He lost it. Those two got in a ton of trouble, and since I was on watch they lifted all punishment on me finally realizing it was them the whole time. I don't feel guilty at all. 
I never did. I never will. Spousal revenge. I had been married for less than a year when I found out my wife, now ex, was cheating on me with her high school boyfriend. We split up for a few months but got back together to try to work things out. Stupid thing to do. But we had a kid. But then I found out a few months later that she was once again cheating on me, this time with my best friend's brother, all while I was trying to finish college at the same time. So I knew it was time to end the marriage and get out. Being young and stupid, we never were able to save any money, and we had way too much on our credit cards, and I knew I was going to have to swallow my pride and file bankruptcy. But when I filed the divorce papers, I included in the paperwork a promise that I would take responsibility of all of the joint credit accounts, most of them were joint accounts. So after the divorce was finalized with joint custody of our kid, and with me owing no alimony or spousal support, since the judge saw I was taking on all that debt, I filed my bankruptcy, and, knowing that credit laws supersede divorce laws, all of that joint debt now went to her name only. She didn't find out about it until several years later, when she and her new meth head husband tried to rent an apartment and was turned down because of her crappy credit. She ended up having to file her own bankruptcy. And then, to try to get her own revenge, she tried to change the custody agreement for our kid and get him full time. She lost that attempt, and I got a yet another taste of revenge victory a few years after that when I was able to prove to the county that she was an unfit mother since she spent all her time not working, doing drugs, and basically neglecting the kids she had with her loser second husband, she ended up losing full custody and my kid is much better off now. It won't sound that great, but it was great to me. I was dating and living with this guy. Only for about 6 months, but in that time he cheated on me repeatedly, I know, shouldn't have stayed, manipulated me, tried to control me, had me paying for everything, had a job for only a brief 2 months, and in the end started hitting me. Oddly enough, he broke up with me. So I got an apartment of my own, and got all my sheet out, another ordeal. A few months later, I'm much happier, and relieved to have gotten away from that experience. Me and my friend are watching a movie at about 2 in the morning, when there's a knock on the door. I go to answer it, and face is there. He's crying and his pupils are huge, and he's acting weird. I asked him if he was tripping, and he said he'd eaten a lot of shrooms. Then he said he just needed to talk to me. It was winter, it was raining outside, and it couldn't have been better. I just slammed the door in his face, dead bolted it, and went back upstairs, and had a good laugh with my friend. It just felt good to do that, it felt like some sort of revenge to me. It was satisfying to say the least. I was at a house party with some friends in like, 2009 I guess? I don't quite remember, I was hammered. People were taking turns on the pong table, like you do, and this super trashy looking, sheet faced broad came in and demanded that we start playing flip cup, which is the most idiotic game of all time. Nobody paid any attention to her demand, so she went around in a circle and pointed right in the face of everyone at the table, in turn saying you're a bussy, you're a bussy, you're a bussy, and you're a bussy. We later learned that this chick had done her first borno, that week and thought she was a hot sheet and had been acting like a prima donna for days. Anyhow, my friend was playing Pong at the time and he's a nice fella, so he said something to the tune of there's a few people waiting for Pong still. Can you wait like 15, 20 minutes? She slaps him in the face. He yells what the fuck is wrong with you? She is streaming curses at him and goes to get her boyfriend. One of the guys on the table pulls me and my friend outside and tells us to just chill for a few minutes that this girl's boyfriend is jacked, a cokehead, he lives here, and he'll probably beat the sheet out of us slash throw us out of the party. So while we are cooling off I see my opportunity. I climb into the empty kitchen and biss into the half full gallon jug of orange juice on the table, then climb back out the window. What happens next? This beach walks into the kitchen with her boyfriend who is fuming. Pours herself a screwdriver, damns it. Me and my buddy took two unopened 12 packs of beer from the patio and bailed. Probably won't get read, but here goes. In middle school I was kind of the ugly duckling. I had teeth to begin my smile was awful. No boobs. Didn't know how to dress. 
Horrible haircuts. No idea how to put Mac Youp on. I also had a huge crush on this kid. Let's call him Mike. So Mike, from 6th to 8th grade, wouldn't give me the time of day. Made fun of me behind my back. Laughed in my face. But awkward me still wanted to date him. Got sent to summer school in between 8th and 9th grade where I proceeded to make friends with one of the more popular kids in my soon to be high school. Over the summer I grew into my teeth, got boobs, new clothes and learned Macoop. Started freshman year looking like a different person. Mike saw me and ended up cornering me in the hallway where we had a conversation where he started telling me how good I looked and asked me out. Because of the confidence of being friends with some of the cool kids, I laughed in his face. Told him he had his chance and lost it, that was his own fault and I walked away smiling. To this day, 17 years later, that's all one of my favorite memories of high school. Being able to turn down my crush, because I was hot, and he had missed out. Revenge is sweet. When I left my first job, I really didn't pull any punches with my exit interview. Gave my managers and co-workers glowing praise, but ripped human resources a new one because of all the times they'd lied to me and screwed me over. A month after I left, my old manager called to ask if I'd be willing to come back part-time because the client for the contract was asking for me to return. After a lot of bullshit, getting the rune around, having to reapply for my job, and finally getting an offer, starting wages at $8 an hour, hours that were conflicting with my new job, weekend shifts, that wasn't what I was told I'd be getting, original salary non-conflicting hours, only work during the week, we determined that human resource chose to make it difficult for me to return, and purposely did this, because of my exit interview. Upper management got involved, and the issue ended up getting escalated from regional to headquarters, getting the president of the company involved. The president took a look at the details, saw that my requests and the requests of the client weren't ridiculous at all, and authorized my rehiring at my terms. Human resources thought otherwise, and said that my coming back wouldn't happen. The president decided at that point that it was time to restructure and standardize human resource policies and offices company-wide. The human resource staff at my old site pretty much got scrubbed, with new people hired on. Sadly, I still didn't get the job. Many years ago, I had this co-worker who was a supervisor's nephew. He was a young guy, 18 or 19, and a complete punk. I was in charge of the department we were in. I'd always have some issue with this kid, but his uncle would never handle it. He'd be on his cell phone texting his girl of the week, or would come in drunk. Could never get him to meet the nightly quota without some difficulty. The last straw for me happened when he got my phone number and gave it to several girls he knew. I'd get texts from some of these girls, which made it awkward to explain to my girlfriend at that time. Eventually I figured out the kid's routine for which days he would likely come to work drunk. I knew what truck he drove and the route he came to work by. So I told an old high school friend about encountering this drunk driver on a regular basis, going to work. This friend of mine was on the local police force at that time and said he'd check into it. The next week, the kid misses the second day of work. He was marked as a no call, no show. Naturally, his uncle dismissed it. Then he misses the next day and his uncle comes over to my department and tells me that he is going to send someone to help me the rest of the week. I asked what had happened. The supervisor said that his nephew was stopped by the police yesterday and he was driving drunk. Then they found some drugs in his truck and arrested him. My supervisor ends by asking which toolbox was his nephew's, meaning that he likely lost his job. Sure enough, the following week the supervisor comes to my depth and empties his nephew's toolbox. The kid was still serving time for drug possession last time I heard. <laughs> Neighbor of mine, Brian was a total as whole. I was two years older than him, and he acted half his age. He pissed on our deck, threw rocks at my dogs and friends, and was a terrible example for my younger brother. Little sheep must have been seeking asylum from his addict mother who beat him and her other crack babies. Anyway, it's my sister's 18th birthday. Her and her friends are hanging out in the living room. Brian is in the basement, pestering me, knowing I don't like him. I'm minding my own business, trying to play N64. He keeps smacking the back of my head. Fourth time I told him to knock it off, 
before I hit him back. Challenge accepted, apparently. He grabs a plastic bat and cracks me in the back of the head. Game over, Brian. I grab the bat, grab him by the throat, and beat the sheet out of him. His face is bleeding everywhere, then I threw the bat aside and worked the torso, throwing him on the ground, stepping on his hands and arms. Soon, I need to pause and regain my energy. He runs up the stairs, full of tears and blood and runs home. I go back to playing N64. My mom sees him. My sister and her friends see him. My brother saw it all and is bawling. My mom's boss, my first future boss, sees this kid who got the sheet beat out of him run out of the house. My mom comes downstairs to ask what I did. I looked at her and yelled I hit him. I hit him and didn't stop until I couldn't hit him anymore. She told me to wait in the basement. I did fuck it. Brian told his mom that my sister got her friends to beat him up and throw him against the coffee table. Brian's mom, fat slutched comes up to our front door, in panties, a tank top and a baby on her hip, saying she's gonna beat somebody as. My mom tells her to get off our property, but she won't budge three. 18 year old men tell her to leave, my mom's boss tells her to leave and my dad, just getting home, says get the fuck away from my family. Fat slutch asks who beat Brian, I walk right up to her, and said I did. And I'll do it again. If he walks into this house again, then I'll kick your ass. Fat slutch storms off to beat Brian for lying to her. I won. Earned the respect of my sister's friends. Proved to Brian that I was a force to be reckoned with and made a lasting impression on my future employer. Got grounded for four days. Brian and his faked up family moved away afterwards. Brian, if you're reading this, I dare you to talk to me in person. Ill faking blind you. When I was a kid I had acne. My dad was very misinformed and didn't really want to inform himself. He was one of those people who just figured anyone who had acne was just dirty and that things like chocolate and pizza would cause acne. He would make comments when he saw me eating things etc saying that that's why I had acne. He didn't really realize they were hurtful. This is all despite the fact that he was paying for me to see a dermatologist and get prescription medication. So he knew damned well I was doing what I could to get rid of it. Well, one night he got on my case about eating some chocolate. I got after him and told him he didn't have any idea what he was talking about and that if he wanted to open his mouth then maybe he should do some research. My mom backed me up. Well, the next morning I was up eating breakfast. I had poured some milk and right before drinking it realized that it was bad to the point of being chunky. I just set it aside with the intent of dumping it out after I finished eating. Well, he came downstairs and made some smartest comment, not being mean, just trying to be funny, and grabbed my milk without asking. I just had this flashback memory to the night before and, rather than stopping him, I kept my mouth shut. He ended up dry heaving into the sink, and then I told him that next time he should be nicer, and I would have warned him. I was laughing pretty hard, we actually get along pretty well, this was just a blind spot that he had. Did I feel bad? Not really, even if it wasn't intentional he was being pretty hurtful. That being said, to this day I can't drink any milk until I've smelled it several times, so I think I've been punished. Throughout middle school, around the age of 13 to 15, this one guy would always verbally bully me with every chance he could get. He also stole my pencils and pens whenever an opportunity presented itself. He got so bad I had to keep all my supplies in a plastic pencil box I had fitted a small lock to, just so I would have something to write with. The worst part by far though was the insults and slander he would hurl at me daily. Throughout middle school he made me feel like a worthless human being, and to this day I attribute a little of my self-loathing to him. It's amazing what the mind will internalize at that age. So on one of the last day of school, we were both in physical education gathering up the various markers and frisbees after class. The douche was spouting his usual garbage about how I sucked at everything, and I would be single for my entire life, and I realized something. It was one of the last days, and we would be going to separate high schools. With that knowledge in mind, all my bottled up anger from the previous years exploded out of me. I hefted the frisbee in my hand, and I knew what to do. I hurled the hunk of plastic Tron style right into the faker's face. It impacted so hard on his cheekbone 
that it broke his skin and he started bleeding all over his piggish face. The thunk it made when it hit was the most satisfying thing I have ever heard. But me being a very mild person with little to no temper, I immediately calmed down and didn't do anything else to the guy, despite him getting angry and practically begging me to hit him again. My only regret now is that I didn't throw down and beat the guy up after that fantastic opening move. I had to have been 12 or so, and my sister being 5 years older than me, she was the pretty popular one throughout high school and was a basketball varsity cheerleader. After she had stabbed the eyes out of my Little Mermaid theater poster, taunted and hit me, she was pretty abusive mentally and physically. I took all of her panties slash spanks slash lollipop slash booty shorts clean and dirty and froze them in a massive bowl of water before homecoming. As she scrambled through the house the next day looking for something anything to wear underneath her super short cheerleading uniform, I went to the freezer, grabbed the bowl of frozen underwear and the hammer and chisel I had set aside. I made sure that every article was completely submerged so that the only way to get to any piece was to chisel and thaw. I tipped the bowl over and the massive chunk of ice slid out onto the table and I said, that is for Ariel. I slammed the hammer and chisel in front of her and walked away. I ruined her life since she had to wear my mom's Hanes granny panties, the only undergarment my mom had that was new. She had tricks, or whatever the Faxton's cheerleaders do that made it obvious to the crowd what she was wearing. She cried all day. We had been going back and forth for our whole lives until she finally moved out. No regrets. She was abusive and severely unclever, so the only way to get back at me was to beat me up, which, after a while she realized that I wasn't a beach scrapper like her or her friends, and that I would nail punches to the face. After the ice and learning to fight, I never had to deal with her again. In 9th grade, my first grade of public school, I found myself in an honors science class with a girl, a very attractive and virtuous girl I've known all my life. We went to a Catholic school from 2 to 8th grade. We were close. I had to sit at a table with her, score, Andrew, the douche nozzle, and another girl. Bear in mind I'm fresh out of a Catholic school, so I'm a bit jaded. Andrew on the other hand stood about 6 inches taller than I, was a douche why baseball playing polo shirt sporting Sperry wearing puka shell necklace bro. I met him the first day and didn't like him, neither did Danielle, my friend. We go throughout the year and I notice pretty much every hot slash attractive girl wants this dude. I brush it off as normal as I get used to public school. After all I have my own group of friends and he's not taking any of the honors classes we are except science. His mommy weaseled him into that one honors class for reasons unknown. So I really never had to see his face. One day, out of the blue we were doing a group project and got up to go socialize so the three of us had to do all the work as per usual. The smug Matherfica comes back to the table and starts laying it on thick to Danielle. She's not having it. She's really good looking, and so is he. But he strikes out, ha. He then becomes very blunt with her well Danielle, I think you should suck my dick oh fuck no, I thought so I reply before she can. Andrew, that isn't something you just say to someone, say it again, and I will punch you in the face. Death stare, my INTJ friends know exactly what I mean. He admits his fault and returns to being a social butter douche. He finally returns to the table and says sorry Danielle, but I think you should suck my dick. Game point set point match I flip a chair and cold cork the Matherfica as hard as possibly can, right in his stupid faking cheekbone. We are tussling before the class even knew what was up. The teacher came to break it up and we both wound up in the principal's office. I told our principal exactly what happened word for word. He looked at Andrew and said quite poignantly well. He did give you fair warning, and I can't say, as though I blame him, if I were her father I'd be in jail right now. Fast forward we both get handed the maximum sentence for fighting 10 days in school suspension and 10 days out of school suspension. The school's policy on out of school suspension was that any work you missed you were not allowed to make up including exams. All six of my teachers called a conference with my parents to rally around to support me and let me make up anything and everything. I did have the baseball coaches up my ass for instigating a fight that left their star first baseman prospect suspended. I thought I got the last laugh, but two years later I was leaving for lunch, yearbook staff, 
he and about three of his buddies caught up with me in the parking lot. They beat me pretty good, I knew why. My high school girlfriend knew this girl from Kithshina, super chill, made her own clothes, artist type. She came down to visit my girlfriend in our hometown of Seaforth, on, pop, zero, and one of our friends later started telling everyone that he'd gotten the hand job from her. At first my girlfriend wanted to yell, but after a couple of joints she decided she wanted revenge instead. A week or so later we were at a house party thrown by a neo-Nazi arsonist and decided to put a plan into action. My girlfriend pretended that we had broken up because I was too controlling which should have been his first clue that this was a load of bullshit, but, and laid out all her feelings to the la, his nickname was Pipes. She flirted with him, hard, and brought him into one of the bedrooms. She talked really sexy and soft and convinced him to strip down to his boxes, after which presumably he was going to get blown. What he was unaware of was that myself, our friend Donnie, and our friend Cassie were all hidden in various places around the room, the closet, under a pile of clothes, and under the bed, as I recall. As soon as he was in his boxes we all jumped out, turned the lights on, and shouted what the fuck? The look on his face was priceless, and he bolted out of there, and out of the party. Then my girlfriend kicked everyone out of the room, and we spent the rest of the night in there. Good times. Once, when I was younger, there was a girl that would always pick on me with her friends. I was the stereotypical nerd, underdeveloped, painfully awkward, in need of glasses, the whole shebang. I had no clue how to defend myself, and she knew it. Anyway, my social studies teacher would always pair us up to work together because we worked so well together, meaning that I did the work and she chatted with her friends and copied me later. At first, being helpless and without a friend to speak of, I let her copy me, thinking that perhaps if I were nice to her, she would reciprocate. Obviously I was wrong. As time progressed, she grew dependent on my help and I grew more and more frustrated. Eventually, I got a different idea. One day, while we were partnered up, I set to work as usual, but ignored her questions. I didn't look at her, didn't speak to her, I just finished the work, passed it in, and let her figure it out. I repeated this for the rest of the year. I know it's not very big, but at the time it felt monumental, as I had never really done anything to stand up for myself before. I was always an easy target, and knowing no other way to assert myself, this small act was my revenge. Not to mention all those years of being pushed around have left me with a good philosophy of kindness and forgiveness. Overall, it left me a better, more reflective person, which I guess, is a good revenge too. I bear no grudges. Okay, so I'm not necessarily proud of this one, but it happened. I played football in high school. My high school was, and still is, sort of the preeminent football authority in our league. There was only ever one other school who could hope to challenge us, which are our cross-town rivals. The rest of the schools in our league have sort of accepted their fate and most handle it well, playing hard and giving us a good run. A couple teams, though, were sore losers. I'm talking about one team in particular. Every time they played us their whole goal was to hurt our players. I'm not joking when I say that one year half their team bent all the chin strap buckles on their helmets out at 90 degree angles making miniature blades on their helmets, a dozen or so guys on our team had chunks taken out of them and three had to get stitches. So still stinging from the poor performance and utter decimation of their varsity squad the night before, the JV team was in rare form this particular Saturday morning cheap shotting, low blowing and late hitting our players. I was playing defensive line, left defensive tackle to be precise. The offensive tackle I was lined up against, 4-3 plays in a row would engage me and immediately punch me in the balls. The first time I gave him the benefit of the doubt that it was an accident and told him to watch it, the second time I told him it was his last warning. He did it a third time and I got fed up. The next play as the ball was hiked, I simply stood up and, in full view of his entire team and coaching staff, kicked him soccer style straight in duels. His whole team erupted in anger. The refs however, knowing this team's reputation for dirty play, ignored them. He played clean the rest of the game. I liked to draw comics in the 7th grade. 
I wasn't really good at them, but I did it anyway and carried around a huge binder full of comics. Horribly disorganized. Some people made fun of me for it, but one fuck as in particular, Jeff, was the worst of all. It all started one day when he tripped me when I was getting on the bus causing the comics to spill all over the slush encrusted floor. He tried to do it again when I picked them all back up. He would do this nearly every day on the bus. Sometimes he got me and I would have to pick them up. This was only one part of his torment. Every few days or so, he would sit behind me on the bus and kick the back of my seat or just torment me and my friend Jane in different ways. I played little league baseball. So did he. He was a pitcher. I sucked. He once intentionally threw the ball at my face. Nearly broke my nose. One day, he decided to sit back and torment me some more. He would reach over and like, touch my face. I'm not sure why he did it, but he did. I got fed up. I snapped. I had a nice pack in my paper bag for lunch. I jumped in the back seat and beat the sheet out of him with it. The bus driver, who was sitting right next to me, did nothing to stop it. The next day me, Jeff, and Jane all get called into the office. Jeff is denying the whole thing, but the bus has security cameras. The principal does not blame me at all, saying that he would have done the same thing. I made up a story about how he was saying all sorts of dirty things under his breath, and that he had an obvious erection the entire time. This steps up the case. Jeff's parents get called. The entire school learns. Jeff is sitting there screaming and denying everything and crying. Jane sits there and starts expounding about how this isn't the first time he has done this and that she believes he'll grow up to be a sexual predator. Jeff gets suspended. He never facts with me ever again and is forced to change bus routes. 8th grade English was hell for me. Not because of a teacher, but because of this girl. She was a bleach blonde emo slash scene girl who was the most judgmental, rude, and beachy person I've ever met before and since. The beginning of the year, she would just say petty things or give me weird looks. As the year went on, it intensified. She would say things like you're ugly no one likes you, you don't deserve to live, etc etc and a few instances she tripped me. It got to the point where I was depressed and just filled with hate. I later found out that at least 10 other people were experiencing the same problem with the same beach. My school is very enthusiastic about anti-bullying policies and everything else. My English teacher didn't seem to notice what was going on, surprisingly. I brought the issue up with the principal. I redirected my principal to three others. I knew that I had achieved victory when I walked by the office and I saw her sitting in there bawling her eyes out and trying to disprove everything. She got suspended for something like a week. Justice was served, no guilt. Side story, about a month later, her house burned down. She was very upset about this. I couldn't help but laugh when I saw her when she got the news in school. It was karma overkill. I forget whether or not there was a jar going around for assistance for her situation, but if there was, it could have been for another house fire. Only $30 or so was donated. There wasn't a cell in my body that felt any pity for her. When I was about 15, I was being stalked by an extremely physical and mentally abusive ex-boyfriend. My mother had finally gotten him out of my life when she called him listing off the terrible things he had done to me and then threatening that if he attempted to contact me again in any way she would alert the authorities. Well, a few months go by and I start casually seeing a guy. The guy in question starts receiving mysterious messages detailing what I was doing at every hour of the day, where I was going, who I was talking to, etc. trying to make me out like I was cheating on him or something by showing the guy that I was speaking to other men or hanging out with my guy friends. So, my mother and I acted on her promise and contacted the police. I filed a protection from abuse. The sheriff went to my ex's house and served him a court order and the protection from abuse. We went to court, seeing my ex look like someone had pissed in his cereal, his parents looking at me horrified, and look at him like he was the absolute scum of the earth was amazingly gratifying. Years later, the ex in question ended up contacting me to apologize. He later told me that when the police came to his house, his parents screamed at him and told him that he was the biggest regret of their lives and that his two younger sisters were crying the entire time. 
Never had anything felt so good. I was at a local beer fest with some friends and family. It took place in a medium ice sized fireman's field with an inadequate amount of pussy potties for the hundreds of beer slugging, glad swollen patrons. To combat this many of the fest goers took to the woods behind the field to relieve themselves. I was on such a trip when I felt a sharp sting in my back and a splattering of unidentified goo on my cheek and ear. I looked down to see what was left of a rotting black walnut on the ground, my mystery projectile. A bushy bearded friend was at the top the hill bordering the Tinkle Woods, and when we locked eyes he pointed discreetly at my brother. Ah yes, that bastard would do something like that. I armed myself with a walnut of my own. For those that don't know these are nasty, black, gooey and stained like a Samumak beach, and snuck up behind my attacker. When I was somewhere between point blank and spitting distance I wound up and threw as hard as I could. Kang Mathafir. Right between the shoulder blades. He grimaced in pain, and as he turned around I could see it in his face. He had no clue why he was suddenly attacked. He was innocent. Nearby, our friend, the real offender, deceiver, traitor, killer of buzzes, evilly laughed as my brother got angry and I apologized. It didn't need to be said, the look we exchanged was enough to know that our revenge would come. Cut to the after party at my house. We devised our revenge and decided it was time. My brother, bless his brave, dumb, soul, scooped a handful of crumbles and nuggets out of the kitty litter box and hid with it, waiting to strike in the upstairs bathroom. I hid down the hall in a bedroom and we called for the mark under the guise of having something neat to show you. He took the bait and proceeded up the stairs. As he turned past the room I was in and towards the bathroom I made my move. I sprung, the tension of my legs unleashing like a jack in the box, who had heard enough of that pop goes the yeah yeah, whatever. Anyways, I jumped, grabbed the waist of the victim and yelled you oh oh oh, our secret code word that let my brother know it was his turn to move. As I held the guilty party in place, he was supposed to go down, but he was bigger and possibly less drunk than I. My brother emerged from the bathroom brandishing his dusty sheet fist, and with a high pitched scream of poop. He thrust the lottery dung heap into the mouth area of our bullishly bearded friend. He knew he deserved what he had gotten, but was in shock. He instantly started denying the event had even occurred. My brother and I returned downstairs to the party to tell our tales of triumph, only to have our friend come down shortly after and deny that any of it was true. But that was fine, for his beard was littered with sprinkles of litter sprinkles. Our revenge was had, and our efforts were a gale to all. Bit of context, my ex-girlfriend Beach was always the sulky attention seeker. If I wasn't doting on her at all times, she was more than happy to get attention from others. I was young and naive at the time, so a lot of this came from hindsight. One day, her friend messaged me online, back in the days of MSN Messenger, and told me that my ex had huked up with this male friend of hers, Daryl. I confronted her about it, and she blatantly denied it to my face, accusing me of picking on her, whilst telling me that need to stop talking to her friends. Combined with this, and her previous behavior, I had had enough of her sheet, so decided to end it. She begged and pleaded for a second chance, and I told her I needed a day or so to think it over. This is where it gets good. The next day, Daryl decides to log on MSN, and I have nothing to lose. I told him that I had ended everything with this girl, but I wanted closure. I said that he had one chance to be honest with me and man up and tell me the truth. If he told me the truth, either way I wouldn't get angry, so he did. He informed me that he and my ex had huked up several times behind my back. Two minutes later QMSN lodge a noise, ex's best friend logs online. I decided what the hell and pulled out every string and move in order to get with my best friend. Point three days later mission success. Got the ultimate revenge. Not me, but my dad. My dad was picked on a lot as a kid. One guy in particular would always try to bully him into smoking. One day my dad accepted the cigarette he was offered and took it home with him. He proceeded to scrape out the tobacco and replace it with some small firecracker. He then put just enough tobacco back in the cigarette, so it wasn't noticeable. My dad is really detail-oriented, so I'm sure it looked like a normal cigarette. 
The next day, the bully asked if he had a cigarette and my dad handed him the altered one. The guy put the cigarette in his mouth and lit it. The firecracker went off. He slipped on the ice. It was winter in Nebraska, and the glass from his glasses went in his face. The guy was screaming in pain and my dad panicked and ran off to class, only to have the cops come pull him out of class. It's worth mentioning that my dad didn't know that cigarettes were lit while in the person's mouth. He wasn't trying to kill the guy, just get him to leave him alone. I think my dad feels kind of guilty because he didn't realize the firecracker was going to go off in the guy's face. But at the same time, the guy never bothered my dad again. The summer before my freshman year of college, I was dating a junior in college whose fall semester just began. One day his roommate told me that he came down with a pretty bad case of the flu, so I decided to surprise him at his dorm. He was about an hour away. His roommate snuck me into their apartment while he was in class. I bought his favorite snacks, made him chicken noodle soup, cleaned his room, and hid cute little love messages all over his room. When he came back from class he essentially ignored me and went straight to sleep for about 4 hours. When he woke up he broke up with me and asked me to leave his apartment. I was heartbroken for about a month and then moved on with my life. Two years later I got a Facebook message from him. We had a lot of mutual friends and saw each other randomly, profusely apologizing, declaring his feelings for me and asking for me back. I wanted to be ruthless in my reply, but I simply remembered telling him, no thanks. You had your chance and I think it's better that we aren't friends. But I'll definitely say hi if we happen to bump into each other. My nature is not to be mean, but my friends tell me that he and his current girlfriend fight all the time and that no one likes her. Whenever I see him now it feels good knowing I moved on to greener pastures. So this kid and I used to be good friends and he ended up dating my other friend at the time, who I had a massive crush on. He cheated on her and treated her like sheet, so I called him out in the middle of quiz bowl practice, he was the star of the team. So since then he wasn't exactly friendly with me. Fast forward a while, and he shows up at a movie I'm at with some friends, and invites everyone back to his place. I tagged along thinking that bad blood was over, whatever. He ended up not letting me inside, which was disheartening, but didn't really bother me much. Fast forward again a little bit, and I learn that these guys are having a party at his house that night. Now, being the star of the quiz bowl team, he was expected to be a pretty smart fella. But I also learned that he had a 2.6 GPA at his college, which I found hilarious. Needless to say, after holding the door for him to leave the building that day, I said see you later. And I hear him mutter to his horse-faced girlfriend no you won't. So that night a group of friends and I bought a couple packs of craft singles and scattered them across his lawn and wrote a big 2.6 on his car windshield. Saw him a few months ago and he stared at me the whole time we were in the same room. He knows and it makes me so happy. I'll make a long story short, I played football my entire youth and through high school. One day, this dickhead on the team decided to have someone get on all fours behind me, and he pushed me over the kid. Needless to say, I hit my head, and I remember being really pissed. This kid was known as a bully, and I recall him asking what I was going to do about it after I was on the ground. For some reason, it irritated me so much I didn't want to go to practice anymore. My coach stopped by my house and convinced me to come back and play. One day we were doing hitting drills, and in this particular drill you had to line spread apart, and each person would basically sprint from each line and hit one another. I believe they were called angle drills. I remember that Dixuka being in the opposite line, and it was his turn. The coach called my name up to the front of the line, so I would be facing up against him. His job was to tackle me, because I was the one with the ball. When that whistle blew, a rage I can't explain surged through my body and into my legs. I've never ran so hard and fast. Sure enough we met, and I hit him so hard he sort of just flew into the ground, while I never even came close to falling. I didn't just run at him, I ran through him and trampled him. Coach walks up to me and says why, aren't you a running back you meathead? Not only did I get revenge, I regained confidence in myself, but I found the position that I would play for the next 6 years. 
It wasn't active revenge, just passive. My ex-wife had an affair and left me around this time of year 3 years ago. She used some evil words to hurt me as she left. Basically things like the man she ran off with is the love of her life. I'll never amount to anything. ETC point ETC. Well, the guy she ran off with was a little beach. Knocked her up within a month of knowing her. She miscarried on Mother's Day. He knocked her up again within 2 months. He decided he didn't want to work anymore and just live with family and make no money at all. One of the many things my ex said when she left was that she never wanted to work again and wanted her new boyfriend to support her. Between the time he quit working and the kid was born, they moved from his family to hers and then after the kid was born he decided he had his fun and manipulated her own family to kick her out with a kid. She spent 4 or 5 months basically living in between her mom's place and her sister's place before she met her new current boyfriend with a few weeks of living in her car. Now she's with someone who is actually housing her but does not trust her for one damn bit because he knows she is a cheater but it seems like he is only using her to babysit his own daughter. So, the satisfying revenge of it all? I supported her, I housed her, I made sure they really didn't have to work. She worked part time, just for the little extra spending money. I had her living in relative luxury compared to what she was living in before we married. Yay, we had problems. Problems that could have been resolved had she wanted to work on them. But now she's had 3 years of stress and a broken family and no one trusts her. Freshman year in high school I was going through a lot of things that month like going to a new school, grandma dying, and just generally being depressed. I'm generally a very sensitive person, and being depressed doesn't help. That month in English class we were reading the Odyssey. Every day we had to do a journal for every certain amount of lines we had to read. This kid who sat next to me was a total kisser to the teacher. He wore suits and ties every day to school, did 300% more than he needed to on homework, and was a generally snooty kid. I realized he started to notice that I have been doing very short journals or none at all. One day, a particularly bad day, he said Snorts didn't do your homework again, are papely? I was so sick of this new Richie, snotty school and was so fed up, I started bawling. Not because of his comment, but because I really wanted him to feel bad. I started saying things, like I have been talking sniff to my grandma, snores every night, because she sobs in hospice. This wasn't true. I mean, my grandma was dying, but that wasn't the reason I wasn't doing my homework. His face fell, and he looked away, and said I'm really sorry to hear about that. His face grew white. To this day we are actually friends and we say mean things to each other all the time. There was this kid at my high school that nobody could stand, but for some reason always knew where to find the parties. My senior year, a group of friends and I were hanging out with a close friend of ours that was in town visiting from college. So we decided to call the annoying kid, let's call him John, to find a party. I call John and he says there is this awesome college party he's at, and we all have to be there. So we get pretty excited, pack into my car, and drive out to the address, only to find it's not really much of a party. There are no cars in the street, and John walks out and immediately starts talking about how lame it was, and how there were only like 4 guys in there. But there is another party we should go to, so we decide to drive to that one. On the drive over, John takes a shotgun, and I realize a dude reeks. He's already pretty drunk at this point, and keeps taking swigs out of this water bottle he's carrying. I ask what's in it, and he says tequila and lemonade. I take a sip, and it doesn't taste too bad, but I don't keep drinking, because I'm the driver. Eventually we rolled up to this other party, but the cops were already in the process of busting it, so we decided just to go sit at the park. At this point, it's me, John, and three other friends hanging out at the local rec center. I notice that John has left his water bottle sitting out on a rock wall by the jungle gym, so I stand up and get my friend Eric to come with me. I pick up this water bottle while Eric and I are walking away and nobody notices. John is too busy being drunk and the other two are pretty into their conversation. Eric and I go out to this field near the rec center and I tell him to stand watch. For what? Eric asks. I'm going to bust in John's water bottle. So giggling the whole time, Eric stands watch while I bust a bit in John's water bottle. 
I shake the bottle up to get it mixed and set it back on the rock wall where I found it. Eventually we get up to leave and John immediately grabs his water bottle and takes a huge swig from it. Eric and I look at each other and start to laugh and just say it's an inside joke when everybody asks. We took John home and then Eric and I explained what had happened to everybody else in the car. I go back to school that following Monday and see John. I ask him how his weekend was and he talks a bit. But at the end, he throws in Jude, you remember that awesome tequila lemonade I had on Friday? I took it to a party Saturday and like 20 people shared it with me. Some girl huked up with me right after I shared it. Probably buried, but I'll bite. I was married to a very unstable abusive woman for 6 years. We had 2 kids before we separated that she tried desperately to keep me away from after we separated. After our separation, she took our kids to the other side of the country, dropped them with her mother, and came back to live off the child support and maintenance the court required I provide. For 6 months she lived fat and happy in government housing, while my kids were raised by their grandmother. My ex received all the support and didn't give a dime to her mother to help with suddenly having two small children in the house. At the end of the 6 months, before I start to leave for my next assignment, she totals her car, the one I was paying for the entire time, injures herself and then tries to take me to court to pay for her medical needs because she didn't keep her insurance cards on her, even though she was still covered. She tried to make that my fault and then assumed that could be rolled into the support and spousal maintenance she was receiving. As a man in a divorce, it was my lucky day, the judge saw right through everything and awarded her none of her demands. After my ex had been living off support and maintenance for 6 months, more than $1000 a week, she still didn't have a way to get herself to her mother's again, and our government housing had been terminated and cleared so she was couch surfing for about a month. She managed to spend every dime and needed my help to get to her mother's and our children. Even though the judge awarded her nothing else than what she'd already received, I was encouraged to have a discussion with her about her needs to see if she and I could come to some kind of agreement. After 6 months of riding a bike to work, she had the car, and working out to combat stress, I was looking pretty damn good. The first thing she said was will you take me back. I shook my head in amazement and started to get up to leave. I hadn't realized before, but she was on crutches and her leg was in a splint from where she totaled the car. Our car. I sat back down and laid out every detail of what I'd been through the previous 6 months, emotionally, monetarily, and mentally. I laid it all at her feet and then finished it off with a reminder that she'd unloaded our kids on her mother a dozen states away and then provided her no monetary support in any way while she stayed here, living life to the fullest, partying with her friends, and making no plans for what would come next. She knew she was dead in the water and that she needed me to save her. I knew it too. The last thing I said to her, you've lived well and long enough on my dime without having to earn any of it. I think it's high time you get up off your ass and start acting like an adult. After that, I stood up and walked out to the sound of her cries from the empty courtroom, pleading with me to give her more money, still seated, reaching for her crutches. It was a little surreal hearing her call my name as the big wooden door closed on the sound of her voice. That was the day I broke free from the grip she had on me after 6 long hard years. I'd finally gotten my identity back from that crazy toxic woman. What felt particularly good was that all her partying and living large had finally come back to haunt her and everyone that she thought were friends abandoned her when it mattered most. Just like she did to me. She had to get a job and save for almost 7 months before she could rejoin our children at her mother's. Less than a week after court I picked my kids up and brought them to their parents to see them for the first time in almost a year. When I was in 8th grade, I broke my wrist on a stair, like a faking idiot, but long story short, just fell onto the corner of a stair. I was in a cast for something like a month. The cast came off, and I had to wear a brace for another couple weeks. About 3 days before the brace was to come off, Mitchell, the slow DGPA, I'm a tough sheet bully because kid, decided he was going to bully me because, well, I don't know. Guess he just had nothing better to do. He and this other kid in my algebra class decided they were going to shove me off my desk. 
I was sitting, minding my own business, and his accomplice came over to draw my attention away. And then, from behind, Mitchell pushes me off the chair. In the way I fell, and how close the desks were, I only had one option. To catch myself with the hand of my broken wrist, in a fist, against the floor. It immediately hurt like hell. I was taken to the hospital by my mom. There, they diagnosed me with another faking fracture in my wrist. He literally rebroke my wrist. My mom drove me immediately back to school. Marched straight into the principal's office, against the secretary's yelling at her to stop, and started chewing out the principal. He calls Mitchell into the office, and as soon as the kid enters, with his little sheet grin, like he wasn't afraid of sheet, he was told that not only was he going to be expelled, but he was probably going to juvenile. Then I had a sheet grin. His accomplice got suspended for a week, but apologized for being a dick. He was alright. Mitchell was a douche. Revenge. Right after I graduated high school, this kid that was a junior tried to take advantage of my girlfriend at a party. She had drunk too much alcohol and wasn't feeling good. Luckily her friend saw what was happening and slapped the sheet out of the him, preventing anything else from happening. I wasn't there, so I didn't hear about it until the next day. I was livid, obviously. I wanted to tear the guy's throat out. I guess he knew what was good for him because I didn't see him for 6 months. I came home from college for winter break, not even thinking about him. It just so happened that he decided to show up to one of my best friend's parties the night before Christmas Eve. I say show up because that's all he did. He never made it inside. I yelled to him that I was about to fuck him up and then I sprinted at him from about 60 feet. A bunch of my friends ran after me because they didn't want me to fight in the front yard of a neighborhood, but I didn't care. I just saw Ed. The kid squared up to me, and I threw everything I had into an overhand right. It landed flush on his teeth, and he went down like a sack of potatoes. He was dazed, not unconscious, but once I realized I knocked out his top left front tooth, I laid off. I wanted to kick all of his teeth in, but I didn't want to go to jail. There was so much adrenaline running through me that I didn't even notice the bloody gash on my knuckle until a girl inside the party pointed it out. I'm not gonna lie though, I thought I was going to spend Christmas in jail. Luckily, the two years have gone by, and I can no longer be charged, yay. All in all I'd say he knows he deserved it, because he told his parents he tripped walking up the stairs. Revenge is sweet. In my second year of college I used to share a bathroom with some dude. Now this dude had a very clean and elegant appearance, but got him he was a nasty human being. He would leave turds to fester on the toilet, bis faking everywhere, vomit on the sink, and one day he even took a sheet on the faking shower. And of course he wouldn't clean the bathroom when I told him to, so it all fell to me. I spent the first month or two of the semester cleaning that bathroom every freaking weekend and sometimes I would clean it at nights before taking a shower. Now I can't stress enough how faking humiliating it is to clean after some other nasty faker. Never mind the stress of not wanting to enter your own bathroom. Sometimes I would hold my necessities and wait until I got to a bathroom from a fast food or a college building. So one day on a fit of insanity I took his toothbrush and scraped the pieces of turd stuck inside the toilet with it. He used it as evidence by the nastiest stains of aquafresh he left on the sink the next day, but it turns out that wasn't nearly as satisfying as I thought it would be. So one day I decided to confront him when he was with his girlfriend in an attempt to shame him too because fuck it I'm the man. Much angry, very wow. Well that didn't do jack sheet. And it was stupid because I should figured that his girlfriend was an nasty fact who was evidenced by the tampons she left hidden behind the toilet prior to this confrontation because apparently these two facts are too lazy to even take out the trash. Well, in the end I had to talk to the landlord, what any sane person would've done, who contacted his parents. I finally got to see these parents scold a grown as 20 ish year old man, which was far more satisfying than my previous attempts at revenge. A tip for you non-nasty girls. Before getting into a relationship with a man, take a look at his bathroom. I keep posting about my ex-fiancé on reddit, and I need to stop, but I have to post this one here. It seems like it's just what you're asking for. 
So, a little backstory, my ex and I were engaged for about 3 years, and I loved her, and still do, with all of my heart. Eventually I found out she was cheating on me, with my friends, all of them. I was betrayed by my friends and my fiancé at the same damn time. I was stationed away from home, so I didn't have any friends or family to talk to, not in person, anyway, and it was right before Christmas. So I spent the holiday, in my house, alone. Well, fast forward a few years, I'm in college, about to get another degree, for chemical engineering, and I already have my farm D, have my own place, and am doing pretty well for myself. Her parents always seem to love me, so they keep in touch, and they tell me all about her for some reason. Maybe they want me to take pity on her. Maybe they want me to feel better about the situation. I don't know. But, what I do know, is that she's got two kids, both from different fathers. She's unmarried, she's barely making it money-wise, and she's generally having a hard time with things. So, that's the backstory. A couple of months ago she called me out of the blue. At first, I didn't know it was her, since I didn't keep her number. She immediately started apologizing to me about how she treated me, and what a terrible person she was to me. I had heard this song several times, so it didn't take me long to realize who it was. She was crying and going on and on about how I deserved better and whatnot. She went on for a good 10 minutes. Then there was a pause, a long one. She then asked, well, aren't you going to say anything? I knew what she wanted, she wanted me to forgive her. I just laughed maniacally as I ended the call. I'm sure she heard the laugh, and I'm fine with that. The torture she put me through when we broke up, and all the shit I went through afterward, not to mention how she sabotaged a couple of my future relationships, I couldn't care less what she thought or how she felt. I hope this doesn't get buried, because I like my story. Years ago I was bullied kinda badly by a kid. It started to get physical, not really me getting beat up, but he pushed me, digged, lightly punched, my arms, etc. I told all sorts of adults, and even though this was Britain, nothing was done. Eventually he tried to properly hit me, and before he even got his arm halfway to me I really snapped, hit him twice with my non-dominant hand, left, but I'm prolonging for more story, around his right eye. He immediately started crying like a baby, and tried to hit me a few times. Every hit was to my face, but I barely moved, just stood in front still. I was in trouble, he wasn't, I started it, but worth it. Perhaps the best part? Depending on if it's too far. He was sent home after a private meeting, and was in medical care for weeks after suffering a football injury. Now the top fact is, that the school nurse told me, just before he came back, that I'd partly burst his eye and a story was made, so I basically wasn't alienated. That part would have made me guilty, if he was a nice guy. I have a stepbrother who is 2 years older than me, but was a grade lower. He was about 6 feet 4 inches, but built like a twig. Seriously the most annoying person on the planet. Really hyperactive, constantly emulating Jim Carrey from Ace Ventura and The Mask, ruined those movies for me, getting into my stuff all the time. I wasn't the most athletic person when we were growing up, and he was like 5 inches taller than me, so I always felt a bit intimidated by him. I played football for the first time sophomore year and he played as well. First day of contact we are lining up in two long lines and just running at each other to celebrate the first day of contact. I'm in one line, my brother was in the other, but he was all the way at the opposite end. We do this a couple times and the coach announces one more time, and practice is over. I get the idea to try and hit my bro. I get so pumped up about it that I'm able to run fast enough diagonally in front of everyone else. My bro saw it coming. So it's not like I blindsided him or anything. He even yelled something like, Oh, you want some of this soul tricks? And started running at me. I knocked him flat on his ass. It was great. Couldn't stop smiling for hours. I was never intimidated by him again. Also, that was when I decided football was awesome. Mostly because of the hitting faking love that. Noon is going to read this, but here it goes. It was 1999, and I just immigrated from Costa Rica with my parents. We arrived in Ohio where I enrolled in 9th grade, and had really good grades. 
We had to move to New Jersey in the middle of my 9th grade year, we were living with my uncle, and he turned out to be an asshole, and I went to a new high school. This particular high school offers a bilingual program, but since I was coming from Ohio, and I was already used to taking all English classes I said I didn't want to go into the bilingual program, they would give you classes in Spanish slash English. I felt that I would lose my practice if I took some classes in Spanish. Anyways, my mom and I go to the guidance counselor's office to enroll in the all English program. She tells me that I have a thick Spanish accent and that I should be in the bilingual program. I say no, I want all English. She becomes this huge beach that tells me that she will put me in the all English program, but that she knows I will fail all my classes because I don't know English well enough, that I'm not prepared, and that she will see me at the end of the year with my tail between my legs asking her to put me in the bilingual program. Fast forward to the end of the year, not only did I pass all my classes, but my GPA was 4.0. I went to her office and put my report card on her desk and said, I guess it sucks to be wrong. Fast forward 4 years, graduated hash 1 in my class and now I hold a job that pays me to travel around the world. I can't begin to explain how amazing this felt. My hate for her gave me the motivation I needed to be even better. I'm a server, and I'm gay. One day I had a table of two really cool guys, they were funny and even sang happy birthday with me to another table. The guy who paid, left his phone number on the credit card slip. I decided to actually call it, because he was good looking, and seemed to have a nice personality. I called the number, and the person I called, had no idea, what I was talking about. I quickly realized I was the victim of a prank. I hung up, and wanted to get revenge. However, I only had the phone number of their friend they were playing a joke on. I decided to make him mad at what his friends will have to do. I went to Miss Space and found some random person's profile that had several shirtless pics and saved them. I then went to Gay Craigslist Personals and posted an ad that said, 19 year old really horny down for anything with ages 30 plus. I created an email just for this and used it to correspond with the people who responded. I gave the phone number they left me to anyone who responded. I did this for a few hours. I eventually got a call from the prankster's friend asking me if I did something with his phone number. He said guys were calling him asking about national health service. I said, I didn't do anything, maybe your friends are pranking you again. And hung up. I realized that this is very late to the party, but here goes. My younger brother, and I fought a lot when we were younger. He was always the provocateur. He knew exactly what to say to piss me off. The TV was in the same room as all other computers, so I was doing homework while my brother was watching sports incredibly loudly. He refused to lower the volume, even though I could hear it over the music I was listening to with my well insulated headphones. My brother will yell at anyone who even talks in the same room that he is reading in, and here I was trying to form articulate sentences with the loud and aimed sports talk about the private lives of overpaid individuals. After more than an hour of trying and failing to concentrate on the important essay to the next day, I ask my brother to lower the volume, and he starts provoking me, calling me names that I'm not in the mood for. I get to the point where I'm about to explode with rage. At this point I would like nothing more than to punch that smile off of his face. I notice that the game is close and there are about 10 minutes left. I go to the TV and unplug every single wire from both ends. I was the one who had set the wires up and my brother didn't, still doesn't, have the know-how to get it back in working order. I then proceeded to unplug the router so he couldn't watch the game online or check the scores. After he realized that I wasn't going to set it back up. He yelled at me and stormed off. I, on the other hand, managed to finish my essay in peace. I was in National Honor Society and put in charge of one of the project committees. My project was to collect and recycle those pop tabs on the tops of soda cans and donate them to the Ronald McDonald charity house. I worked my ass off, but nobody in the club went out of their way to faking help me out. My collection beans were all thrown away because our national health service advisor didn't put out a memo that they were not garbage, he wouldn't let me give any incentives for members to donate tabs, and he never made any of my events mandatory. 
So three weeks into the project, this is whole and the National Health Service president decide to kick me off the project. They gave it to this other fuckhead who donated like 50 pounds of tabs to me, like he was waiting for that moment his whole life. His mom was an airplane stewardess and would take the tabs off the soda cans every flight. Fast forward to two months later, the project was still an utter failure and the leading class had about a 2 liter bottle of coke filled up with tabs. On the last day of the competition, I did what I had been plotting to do for months. I brought all 50 pounds of tabs to my class. My teacher called the National Health Service advisor and said, you may want to check this out. I think we just won. Sure enough, we did, and I specifically received a cake from the Ronald McDonald house that said thank you Mr. Masturbator Gator's teacher's class and the Masturbator Gator, hand delivered by the prick who donated the tabs and stole all my credit for the project. The best part, my teacher asked for a picture of him shaking my hand as I cut the first piece of cake. It was one of the happiest moments of my life. This is probably going to get buried under all the comments, but fuck it. I was dating a girl a long time ago. She was crazy. I knew it. Didn't care. She was wild in the bed. Her friends were also crazy and kept trying to cause drama between us and eventually talked her into breaking up with me. So the friend that talked her out of it was on the brink of starting up this knockoff of Suicide Girls Company and they had everything lined up. Models. Tons of photos all stamped with their logo and website on it. They basically had everything ready to go. Except for buying the domain. So I noticed this. And I bought and parked the domain for a few years. So they couldn't use it. I set it up to forward to a picture of tattooed pigs. With a this domain is for sale sign on it. The girl went faking batshit crazy. Her and the company threatened to take me to court. I said go right the fuck ahead. Nothing ever came of it legally because they didn't have a case. And then I started getting text messages and phone calls with threats. So the ex left an old cell phone behind with all of her contacts on them. When I realized the numbers and names matched up I called the cops. I gave them a rundown on the threats. Showed them the text messages and showed them the numbers in my ex's old phone. They called all of the numbers and told them it was officer so and so and said if the threats don't stop, they'd basically be in deep sheet. So after that, I never heard from any of them again. Needless to say, the company never took off. I was dating this gorgeous girl for about two months. We had nothing in common and I hated her personality, but I liked her because I knew that when I would want to end it, I'd have multiple reasons to so anyway we broke up and she started dating some other douchebag. I didn't think I was the jealous type, but I fucking hated this guy. So I went on Facebook and made a fake profile of a beautiful girl named Ashley Barnett. The site model that I used went by the name of Misty Keys. So I spend a week just posting every day, adding pics, adding mutual friends, making this girl real unbelievable. Finally when the time is right I strike and get all kinds of sweet with this as whole. We flirt for a few hours and then start getting sexy. After he said a few raunchy things, I then got him to outright say that he wanted me to come over for some shower sech. And as soon as I read that I knew I hit gold and forwarded those messages to my ex from the fake profile saying your boyfriend is a sheet bag. Needless to say, 5 minutes later her relationship status was single and I felt faking good. I told the guy who I was, and he was pissed, but never told anyone probably due to his embarrassment 6 months later I didn't think she'd care, or she might even thank me with a complimentary blog. I tell her everything, and she breaks down screaming and crying telling me I ruined her life and to never speak to her again. So really it may have not have been my business to mess with their relationship, but do I regret it, fuck no. A fine inquiry. I had not arrived home from whence I had been away on years of journeying and expedition. Daybreak was a frigid beach, and my bones had yet acclimated from the searing dunes of south, but as my mare closed that last stretch between the mountain road and my father's homestead, I saw, against the pale dawn rising beyond the eastern wood, the chapel keep. A fire arose in my chest as I imagined the stories I would relay to my kin, stories I bore in ragged and motley scars on my flesh. Yet as I drew near, I saw a strange sight, a pot turned to shards upon the trail to the greeting hall and the main door flung ajar. 
In silence I dismounted my steed, and stalked forward, and my heart thumped as a stretched hide doth when struck. I tasted dread on my tongue. I crossed the threshold and beheld then, across from me, illuminated by a lone candle upturned upon the flagstones, a ghastly sight. Blood, a continent of black fluid. Upon it lay generations, scattered like vessels run aground, and stripped of their hulls and stern. Inside me rose a tide vaster in its sorrow than the sea I had traversed only a fortnight ago. I approached, my cape dragging like a fisherman's net and the dark sticky stuff. I knelt before the first of the slain, my own mother. Her hair, golden and fair like the first season's harvest, shone still, and for a moment I saw her live again. Yet, with a trembling hand, I reached to touch her cheek, and felt only the coldness of ice upon her. Her neck, always prettied with the finest, that my father had won in his younger years, too laid barren and frozen. I retreated, crawling away in my eyes, searching for solace, found none. Though no word was uttered, there was a calling still. Atop a simple altar at the end of the hall, stood the small wooden figure of the old god king, eyeless and fierce. In my hour of desperate on I fell before him, demanding his favor and guidance. As I unclasped my hands, his power manifested, for before me, below the altar, lay a forgotten thing. Atop my gallant ride again, I drove out into the burgeoning day, clutching the rough and rusted felling axe that the heavens had provided. In town, I found the alehouse well stocked with drink and company. Merry indeed it was, and verse was made and string plucked, lasses danced and lads still chased. I'm sure I was a ghastly figure, blood soaked and crazed with grief. Twas then that I saw near the tankard, a familiar bastard, a farmhand I had known since childhood. He hung his head verily over a chalice, so that in it, floating atop the brew, the small seal of my mother's new god floated. I took his attention, and seeing in my eyes my intention, the farmhand hewed me with a short blade. Drunk as he was, his accuracy suffered, and swiftly I grabbed him by the tuft of his hair, and forced his cheek against an ear table. The place once merry now turned to me. I peered at those suddenly so silent, and as I raised the old and dull blade above me, I cried so that my call would be heard from hollow tough jawed, from valley to plain, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. In a strike I split his skull, its contents spilling across pewter plates and silverware. From the mess of gore I retrieved a half still covered in scalp, and as I walked toward the tankard, I plunged it in. The taste washed away my grief, and as I stared into the fire of near half, I saw my kin in Valhalla, dining with the old gods. In 9th grade, some kid kicked me in the balls at a football game. I was just walking, and he managed to do some running start side winder kick there was no way I could have seen it coming, because he started this from behind me. It hurt so much I had to go home and ice it, but not before trying to chase him down. About a full year later, maybe a week off one way or the other, I was at a high school football game, and I saw him. I had never let go of what had happened, but I never had a chance to get revenge. So I decided now was as good as ever, and stopped him, so that I could talk to him. Uh, that should have been a red flag, because I never talked to him, but whatever. After a minute or so, someone walked by, and he turned his head to say something, so I had the perfect opportunity. As hard as I could, I wound up a kick, and nailed him right in the balls. He instantly dropped to his knees, and looked up at me with a mixed look of pain and terror. I said something like that's for what you did a year ago, and then walked away. The next Monday, we got new lab partners for my biology class, and he was my new partner. He was terrified of me the entire marking period never questioned anything I did, always did what I told him to do, and flinched a few times when I moved suddenly. This is kind of relevant, so I'll add it. I think I scare him still to this day. The last time I saw him was over spring break my junior year of college. Pretty much everyone from my high school was home for the week, and for the first time most people were 21, so a group of us were at the local bar. Someone told him, which pissed everyone off, no one likes him, and unfortunately he sat right next to me. First thing he said was, hey, did you guys hear, so and so is a lesbian. That was news to me, because this girl was a long time friend of mine, and while we had drifted since college started, she was the only girl from my class that went to the same college as me, so I felt like I should have known that before this jackass. 
Anyway, no one was listening to him, because as I said, before no one likes him, so he kept repeating it to each individual person. It was starting to piss me off, because it wasn't his place to tell anyone, so after the third or fourth time he repeated it, I grabbed him by the shoulder, turned him toward me, and as intimidatingly as possible said, shut the fuck up. Our faces were inches apart, and our eyes were locked. This look on his face was the same look he had when I revenge kicked him in the nuts. He didn't say a word the rest of the night, which was truly satisfying. I worked in mortgage servicing. I was in a position to try and save people's homes by having them apply for a government modification program. They fill out an application, submit financial documents, pay stubs, taxes, and if they meet the parameters, they get their mortgage brought up to date and their monthly payment drops. This lady didn't qualify. I was trying to explain to her why, being very professional despite how rude she was being. Then she started swearing. I told her I would hang up if she continued. Then she started imitating my voice. I grew up with a speech defect that is mostly gone now. As a kid it was very prominent and people couldn't really understand me most of the time. I got picked on Alert as a kid. Now I was a grown adult and here was a grown woman mocking my voice. This made me livid, but I remained professional. Then she started yelling and swearing. That was my cue. You can hang up on them if they start swearing at you and you've already warned them. I hung up the phone, walked away from my desk, went to my car, and screamed myself hoarse. Then I sobbed for a little bit. I memorized the name, address, and phone number of this woman. I spent about a year really wanting to do something to get back at her, but knowing I could be risking my job if they could trace it back to me, all calls are recorded. A year later I was working in a different department tied to foreclosure. Guess whose name came across my desk? That's right. This lady's. I got to foreclose on her house. I really didn't like working in foreclosure. Got out as soon as I could. Out of all the accounts I worked in foreclosure, hers was the only one I felt no remorse. You don't have to call the people when you work in that area, but I made it a point to call her. I made up some excuse that seemed routine and tedious red tape sounding. I did this just so she would know it was me who worked the account. I'm not sure if she remembered how mean she was a year before or if she recognized my voice, but I like to think she did. It felt great. Justice was served. No regrets. Guy in high school jacked me for $20 over a weed sack. He was such a colossal dick that I don't even think he remembered doing it. The guy jacked a lot of people. In the bike area in my high school there were anonymous lockers set aside for skateboards. Slap a lock on it, it's yours. Notice dude has taken one of the lockers. I also notice that he doesn't have any master lock. He's got a sheety American. He leaves, I leave. Wait for the bell to ring, head back. Busted that lock open with one good smack from my skateboard. Pull out an ice jacket and Walkman cassette player. This was a long time ago people. Cut school. Throw a jacket and Walkman into the river under the freeway, where I know a lot of hip kids hang out after school. It will be seen, and it will get back to him, that his sheet wasn't stolen for gain. It was stolen to be destroyed. Worked perfectly. Guy was pretty shamed at getting jacked, lost face with a lot of people, because he never found out who did it. I was suspicious, but I lied right to his face, played the sympathetic guy, dude that sucks. If I faking, hear anything about who did that sheet I'll let you know. That's faked up, what kind of coward does that sheet? Two different stories, I'm relatively small for my age, and always have been, but I have always fit in fine with everyone else, actually being pretty strong compared to a lot of kids. When I was in elementary school, 4th grade I believe, there was this one rich, arrogant, snobby as whole of a classmate who saw me as a perfect bullying victim. Little did he know I was born and raised as the ultimate Italian, I didn't take any sheet. For about a month he just made remarks and talked behind my back and I couldn't care less and it only made me think lower of his petty self. Then one day, he pushed me from the back when we were out for recess. I proceeded to turn around with the force of what seemed like Super Saiyan Goku at the time. I still feel like it was the strongest punch I've ever thrown to date. Anyway, I ended up breaking his nose, knocking out two of his teeth, and dislocating his jaw. 
Our school has a zero tolerance policy for fighting slash bullying, I got sent to the office thinking I would get expelled, and when I talked to the principal she said, if you ever get bullied again, talk to me. Other kid transferred out, greatest series of events that have ever happened to me. Story 2, there was a teacher I had in middle school who was always a colossal beachotron to everybody, especially her students to the extent where she swore at them and would give us hours upon hours of homework in merely 6th grade, it was way excessive, even though it was an advanced slash gifted program. She was infamous throughout school for getting arrested for 2 days on charges of assault. Multiple students tried to get her fired, but the school wouldn't do it for some unearthly reason. One day, she asked my then and still best friend to stay after class because he didn't do his work and I heard her screaming and cursing at him in the hallway. I pulled out my cell phone and recorded her through the glass screaming at my friend and immediately ran to the office to show the principal. Within the next week, the teacher went on to talk about how Summer's whole kid, me, reported her to the office and how she was going to get fired. Throughout that week, she gave loads of homework, which out of protest, only a few students did out of about 150 in my class. I stayed after school to watch basketball games with my friends a lot, and on that Wednesday of that week, at the basketball games, me and a best friend of mine went to our business teacher, who not only was the mother of a friend of ours, but also one of the coolest people you'll meet, let us commit our master plan. In her computer lab, we mass printed full page pictures of the beachy teacher's mugshot, and with the help of the business teacher, taped them all over the school. Keep in mind this was after the administration was gone, and the only people not in the gym were a few janitors. Regardless to say, the next day, everybody walked into the school, either laughing or holding in laughter, including the staff. When Beachotron walked in, she saw dozens upon dozens of pictures of her mugshot all over the school and broke down crying. To make things even better, she got fired that day. The principal loved me and also knew it was me and she just laughed and said whoever did it was in big trouble. Ultimate justice, no guilt whatsoever faking. Awesome. In my old sheety school, when I was in grade 3, the bathroom doors which led to the crappy toilets had no locks. So one day, the class bully opens up a door and straight up pisses on my leg while I was using one. For clarification, these are the types of stalls that have the sheeter on the floor. He said sorry with the biggest sheet eating grin I have ever seen. Now I used to be that one kid who always forgives people, no matter what they do, but this was something I would never let get past me. So, I stole his bag while he was being a dickhead in an unknown area, stole his lunchbox, and put some dirt and pebbles in his sandwich after emptying his water bottle on a few chosen books of his which of were of the last period so he doesn't suspect the wet books and then took a bis in his water bottle. I had the pleasure of seeing him attempting to chew into his sandwich. After coughing it out, he thought it's just as bad parents had given him mound dew in his water bottle. He threw up after trying to take a swig. He had to go back home after that because that sheety school's clinic thought he was suffering some weird disease or something. Although, due to this, I was unable to see his reaction over the books, which was a shame. But I had my revenge. And I didn't get busted for it, which was pretty great. That incident changed me. From that day on, I was a different kid. I finally found out that people sucked and when anyone got up in my face, I will have my petty revenge. This is getting buried, but what the heck. Here goes. I was sitting in front of an entitled bastard for a year in junior. Hi, the kid was sick, he could barely move, his lungs were shot, and his heart sucked. He had a hard time with a lot of things, and I can understand a lot of his behavior, but he decided to pick on me, for no reason other than me being the shortest kid in class, and the new guy. Every day, he would kick my chair, reaching beneath his desk with his long, slender, faked up legs, kicking and kicking and kicking. This along with the constant banter and harassment which I had in no way earned. All of this, just because he thought he would always be safe due to him being slightly taller than me, and him being sick, so no one would dare kick his ass. Until I finally snapped. In the middle of class, I got up slowly, turned around, flung his faking desk and all his little sheet on it to the side, and looked him dead in the eyes. He froze in terror, or shock, I'm not sure. I took a step, 
covering the distance between us and where his desk had been, grabbed him by his shirt and pulled him out of his chair and slammed him into the wall, putting my hand on his throat as I pinned him. Kick my chair one more time. Make my day. Sat him down, put his desk back, picked up his stuff. He went out into the hallway gasping for his breath and crying. Teacher saw everything, didn't get reprimanded, kid probably learned a valuable lesson. Might be alright. When I was in junior high I got picked on a lot on the bus. Most didn't faze me. But one day I try to find a seat on the bus and finally sit down next to a girl in a grade below me. Immediately she says something to the effect of EWW don't sit beside me. To which I reply. If I could find someone better to sit by I would. Then her, half orc looking, sister swings around out of the blue and says something to the effect of what did you say to my sister and proceeded to hit me. Only once I might add but just right. My nose instantly becomes a bloody mess and my eyes start to water. The rest of the ride is a magnitude of kids shouting at me to hit her back to me being a bussy. I get a trip to the nurse's office. I don't know if she got into trouble or not. Anywho about a year and a half later I go to a friend's birthday party and who should be there but the two sisters. As everyone leaves from the campfire we were sitting around the orc stops me and tells me she is sorry for what she had done on the bus that day, I had changed quite a bit in that year, appearance wise. Then she proceeded to tell me she was infatuated with me and that she even liked me when she hit me. I happily tell her that I'd rather die and that she was a horrible whale of a woman then I walk away. Later that night I made out with her sister in a hallway. I knew where the whale would see us. Oh how that party was ruined. I regret nothing. This kid was always being a huge annoying dick to me in the 6th grade. He tried to steal my crush. We would play basketball during recess and he would always excessively foul me. I told him not to or we would end up fighting. I was scared of fighting because I didn't want to get my ass beat when I got home for being suspended. But one day I went up for a jump shot and he pushed me into a brick wall and I hit my head on one of those windows that opens out from the inside and it hurt like hell. So I got up and punched him in the head then the gut. After that I threw him at a brick wall and he fell into a planter. I got suspended and my parents were happy I stood up for myself and I wasn't in trouble. He would always make stupid and slice comments after that, but always afraid to really mess with me. Just enough to fuck with me, but not get in trouble for it. Well I forgave him, since I already beat him up, but kept it in mind. We became friends after a while. Later that year it was snowing, and we didn't have school I was bored and decided to walk around. I saw him in his backyard and he invited me over. We had a snowball fight and made snowmen. His mom really liked me, I don't know if it was because I was black or if she's just always like that. It was a total she wants the D vibe. She made me cookies and gave me some hot chocolate an hour or two later I had to poop but I couldn't make it home. I asked if I could use the bathroom there and her mom told me yes, so I pooped. It wasn't just any poop, it was the most poop I've ever pooped. I think it was diarrhea but it was 6 years ago so I can't remember. Needless to say I saw him at school the next day and he said I flooded their toilet and it cost them $150 and his mom was pissed. Half act him. Good. Forgive but don't forget. One day in middle school, 6th grade, it was gym class which I never really cared for but never dreaded. I was pretty small but I could do most if not everything in class just as well as everyone else. Well, anyway, one day, we are playing dodgeball. I had never really played dodgeball a lot, and thus, I never really knew how to hold the ball correctly and throw, and with my small hands, it was pretty hard to do. Even if I had known how to, I could throw anything else really well. Just something about that god-awful day. Anyway, there was this guy in class, who liked to tease me about whatever. I didn't really care, because why should I? Anyway, we are playing dodgeball, and I'm trying my hardest to throw nicely, but it ends up going in odd directions, which amazingly no one catches. He is sitting near the line, because their team was winning. I'm still left, because I'm small, and paying more attention to dodging than anything else. Well this cheathead starts laughing at how bad I'm throwing, and it kinda pisses me off. 
I go off to the left of him, and while he is distracted, I try getting him out, because why not? That would have been the biggest slap to the face ever. But something different happens. I throw the perfect throw, hitting him right in the face. Solid. It was moving pretty fast too. Easily one of the best things to actually come out of middle school. Well, the coach stops the game and asks who did that. I don't claim it because I don't know if I would get in trouble and I don't want to be known as the reason we can't play dodgeball anymore. Gym teacher just assumed it was one of the more athletic students, but with no proof, he just lets us continue the game. Guy gets sent to the office to fill out a piece of paperwork as required when someone is injured on school grounds. No dodgeball for him the rest of the day, which was a really big deal, because all we ever did was run or stretch.